Spear slashing madness, building towards a mortar strike to turn the tide of battle. We're going back into Dauntless to look at how to get the best out of that war pike. Damn. Hello and welcome to PlayStation Grenade. How's Dauntless treating you? Are you ready to give the Warpike another go? It perfectly mixes together the flair and ease of the chain blades to the tactical skill set and stamina management needed to wield the axe and hammer. With a little time, the Warpike could be your new bay. Let's start out by outlining the role of the Warpike user. The spear element is the slashing and piercing weapon, which primarily opens up wounds on a behemoth for the team to take advantage of and deal additional damage to each body part. Here's our standard piercing attack. It's super simple. Spam away on the square button. To get the most out of this combo, press square four times, but on the fifth input, hold down that button. This gives us a stamina draining multiple stab move infused with ether goodness. The key point to notice here about the square attacks is that we are stuck in one position, completely stationary, arguably a sitting duck. And that's where our second combo comes to our aid. Our triangle combo consists of three successive presses to perform a harvesting attack string. Instead of a stabbing motion, this attack is full of flair and slashes the behemoth. And get this, we can move around whilst using it. Perfect for keeping up with the beast and maximizing that combo. The final button press places us in a long animation, which can cause excellent damage, but we need to remember one thing, cancelling. We can simply roll to stop this animation instead of waiting for it to end. In the right scenario, this is a necessity. To make best use of both of these combos, we can in fact merge them together, cross combo. At a base level, try four square inputs followed by three triangle inputs to aether infuse your harvesting attacks. The world is your oyster here. Try different variations of square and triangle inputs to find out what works best for you and what works best against each behemoth you fight. The only rule is how this combo ends, either through the standing multiple stab or the whirlwind. As a basic rule, use triangle attacks to keep up with a moving target and intersperse that with square attacks to open wounds. Just don't stay still for too long. Cross combos completely revolutionize this weapon. Damn. There's a very important second reason we have piercing and slashing attacks. They actually have different uses on the battlefield. Piercing attacks, that's our square button combo, are all about thrusting forward the spear element and opening up wounds. Those are the gashes that appear on the behemoth. This in turn forces that behemoth to take more damage on specific body parts. The slashing attack on the other hand, that's the triangle buttons, that's where the blade cuts across the target and is used to cause damage. By combining both, you will maximize your attack numbers. And by the way, I'll link a video explaining attack numbers as it's quite confusing knowing the difference between red, blue, white, and yellow. So give it a watch if that didn't make any sense to you. And the final point about combos are the stamina they use. Learning to balance moves which don't use stamina with those that do is the real skill using the Warpike. Luckily, we can still pull off many stamina-based moves without stamina, although there is a drop-off, of course. Speaking of stamina, we have a running spear attack. The pike charge is completed by holding square whilst running with your weapon out. It absolutely murders your stamina meter, and I can't use it to save my life, but maybe you're able to use it. I wish you luck. Our final attacks are fantastic ways to close the ground on a behemoth and set up attack combos. Rolling attacks. Whilst rolling, press square to lunge into a piercing attack to open a wound or try the triangle variant to cause base damage. Follow that up with a combo to maximize effectiveness. Right, let's look at the bar in the top corner. This bar fills up every time we land an attack. A great thing to notice is that we do more damage the further up this bar goes. This makes dodging imperative, as being hit by the behemoth will lower that gauge, and thus reduces our attack power. But there is another use for that meter, the mortar attack, our ether missiles. We have a projectile weapon built into our war pike. As our attack bar builds up, we have the ability to turn that energy into a mortar strike. To do this, we simply press R1. The animation is nice and quick. To fire the rocket, we simply hold R1 again, like this. Oh, um, that wasn't supposed to happen, but let's break that down. There is an aim animation which slowly lines up our shots, showing the perfect moment to fire. 
If we shoot too early or too late, the missile will be out of control. Luckily though, if the beast is directly in front of us, right in our face, at point blank distance, the mortar will hit either way. The damage numbers of each rocket is dictated by how much energy we have stored prior to pressing R1. So banking a weak shot will result in poor damage numbers, banking a strong shot will result in high damage. Easy enough to remember. So always keep an eye on that gauge when storing rockets. Here's the best bit though, the main use of the mortar doesn't require high level projectiles. My advice may sound strange, but it's always to have a mortar saved, regardless of the power level. And this is because we're going to boop with it. Damn. Booping or interrupting a behemoth is the bee's knees, it's the mutt's nuts. Catching a beast off balance and causing it to fall opens up the opportunity for massive combos of damage. So when an ember main runs at you, use your mortar to boop it. When a shriek flies your way, boop it. Always remember, weak mortars are just as good as strong ones for this task, so boop away. Oh, and here's a great tip if you decide not to use your mortar mid animation, or maybe you've missed your opening. Simply roll to cancel the shot. The stored energy will stay in the war pike for the next time you use it. This is a godsend, so store projectiles by roll cancelling. To progress from this, if you can't find a boop opportunity against one of the behemoths you're fighting, then simply don't bank any shots. No need to save them. Instead, go for that damage buff. Get the gauge as high as possible and go to town on that behemoth. The higher the gauge, the higher our attack damage. So there we have it, a super quick look at getting the best out of your time with the war pike, the spear of death. I'd love to know your thoughts and if I've missed anything, put it in the comments below and I'll heart your comment. Thanks for your time, I much appreciate it and hopefully I'll see you soon in Dauntless. I'm Adam from PlayStation Grenade, it's been a bloody pleasure, I'll see you next time.